I'm Atik Rahman, an AWS Certified Solutions Architect, and today I'm going to show you how you can install SSL certificate in your Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So Red Hat has been one of the most secured and preferred operating system for the corporate organizations. So it has been used by many, many organizations, and they are now one of the biggest Linux operating system maintainers. So we are going, there has been a lot of uh, variations of Red Hat, like CentOS and other operating systems, which is a free version of Red Hat. Red Hat is also free, but you need to purchase a support uh, system from Red Hat, which costs around, I think, $2,000 per month, I guess. I need to check. So um, Red Hat is very popular and uh, you need to know Red Hat well if you wanted to work for a big corporate i'm in my ec2 dashboard so let's get started by creating a new instance i'm going to click launch instance and um, in this list i will choose uh, red hat oh sorry it's been refreshing okay in this list i will choose red hat enterprise linux 8 so let's select that then i'm going to choose uh, t2 micro which falls into the free tier. Then I'm going to use IEM role, but it doesn't have any effect because you don't, there is no systems manager installed, system SSM agent installed on Red Hat by default. So you need to connect using PuTTY and then install SSM agent and then you can use it. But anyway, that's a good practice to always use IEM role, which has SSM permissions given. I have other videos uh, created on why I use IAM role for uh, connecting to my instance. I have listed down. If you just go to my channel, you can see those. Then I'm going to check this part, enable permission protection. That's a good habit. And everything is as it is. Now let's about storage, eight gigs. Oh, by default it's 10. So on other things like Ubuntu or Amazon Linux, it's eight, but in Red Hat, you need to have minimum 10. That's okay. Let's move on. Give it a name, uh, Project Red Hat. Oops, sorry, Red Hat. Then I have already some security groups. Let's use that. I have this key, so let's use this. Okay, it is launching uh, just in the securities. I need to whitelist my IP because as I said, Red Hat doesn't come with SSM agent installed. So I need to use PuTTY to connect to my instance. So um, cancel this and use my IP. That's my IP. Okay, it's it was that there so now let's go back and uh, it's still not ready yet meanwhile i create an elastic ip this is always a good practice to use elastic ip why because without elastic ip your ip can change anytime if you reboot the system or uh, so i always suggest to use elastic ip Oh, sorry. I did I click something wrong? Um, I look at. Sorry, I have to associate elastic IP, and this is the instance I selected. Okay, so that's elastic IP. Then I go to instances, and if I click here, I will see this is the IP address and this is the elastic IP. Let's copy that. And let's click on connect. You will see an error because it is not installed SSM agent. I need to use SSS client. I will copy this uh, part. I have the I have downloaded the PM file in my local. Here it is. You need to uh, click on properties and add an attribute read only.
then you can connect using your PowerShell as well. This is the new feature of PowerShell that you can connect EC2 instances using PowerShell. So I click, press enter, and let's wait. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if my IP is whitelisted. Okay. Let's try it one more time. If my IP is not whitelisted, SSH. Yeah, okay. I should be able to connect. Let's try again one more time. Oh, oh, oh I need to refresh the page. Connect here, SSH client. Yeah, there is. This is the IP. Sorry. So I was copied the old IP. I think the IP is changed. Copy here. Paste it. And it's connected. Great. So I'm connected with, um, I'm connected to my EC2 instance from the PowerShell. So I don't need PuTTY anymore. That's also a big improvement. So first of all, I need to install HTTPD server. sudo yum install HTTPD minus y. This will install the HTTPD, which is the Apache server basically. It says that you your system is not registered to Red Hat subscription management. That's true because I am using just non-registered. If you want to register, there is a license fee available. So the HTTP installed. So let me start the HTTP server. sudo systemctl start HTTP. Clear the screen. Then let's install PHP. So do yum install PHP minus y. It will install, I think, PHP 7.2. That's true. PHP 7.2 is installed. That's correct. So let's clear the screen. We will copy the IP address now. Copy the IP address of the system and let's point our domain to this IP address. Okay. Now, what we'll do is we are going to uh, create a virtual host and point this domain with a folder in our server. For that, I have an example virtual, sorry virtual host example if you search with this virtual host example i think the first thing you will come my site and then you can get an example of virtual host how it looks this is the virtual host copy to the notepad and then replace this with your domain name like I'm doing. So here, replace this with your domain name. Let's keep everything as it is and copy it. Okay. Then I'm going to create a configuration file, which is sudo vi etc httpd conf.d slash vhost.conf. I for insert mode and then paste the, all the values here. 
Okay. Now restart the HTTPT server. So to system CTL, restart HTTPD. And I need to create this folder because it's the base or root directory of my site. So sudo mkdir, sorry, I paste this and the folder is created. Now, if I browse the site, I should see, I should be able to see the default page, but it's not why it is the reason. Error connection refused. Okay, uh, it is going to HTTPS because I have already uh, created this site previously with HTTPS. Okay, it is going with HTTPS. Why it's not HTTP? Okay, because I have previously used this site as an HTTPS. So the browser remembers this and we don't have set up the HTTPS yet. Let's set up the HTTPS. So for setting up the HTTPS or actually SSL certificate, you need to use Certbot. This is a free tool. And uh, using Certbot, you can install a free SSL. So first you need to install SnapD. SnapD is by default available on Ubuntu. By default, it's pre-installed. These are the distributions that has pre-installed Ubuntu 20, Ubuntu 18, Manjaro, KD, Solas, all these flavors have pre-installed. But it's not pre-installed on Red Hat. So what we need to do is click here and we need to click to this. We need to copy these two lines and paste it here. Okay, that's line number one. I need to copy the line number two as well. Here is the line number two. This might take some time. Uh, try to be patient. It takes around two minutes time. You need to be just keep your patience. Okay. Uh, um, This just requires some time. Let's have a cup of coffee. <sighs> okay, you can move around, have a coffee. Come back here after two minutes because this takes around two minutes time. Okay, meanwhile, you can use my site to uh, get a lot of tips on Linux, AWS, etc. with awswithatik.com. I have a lot of tips, more than 100 articles written on AWS, DevOps, Docker, Security, Linux, WordPress, all those things. Whenever you have any issues, you can just come to my site, search for the issue and uh, I see. <laughs> It's a Canva watermark. I need to remove this because I have a Canva paid version now. Using Canva, you can do a lot of things. I'm using Canva recently and I have a Canva sign up link just in the description. Using that link, you can actually sign up for free with Canva Pro, not free. With Canva Pro, you can do a lot of things and you don't have this kind of watermarks. I already have Canva Pro, so I will replace this. Okay, as I said, it will take time. <clears throat> okay. 
also where you can get the Canva link uh, if you go to any of my videos. And this um, SSL setup AWS. Oh, sorry. If you search SSL setup AWS, you should see one of my videos, I guess. There it is. And Ah, oh, primarily. So I have Canva anything here. Oh, let's go to my actually channel. Go to videos. It should be one of my latest videos. Yeah, here it is. So if you see the description and click on the partner Canva, you will get a free Canva Pro for 30 days and if you don't like you can cancel it anytime so i suggest using canva for creating uh, nice images for your social media well let's back, come back to our uh, friend red hat and he's still working okay so as i said you can have a coffee move around and come back here you don't need to do anything you just need to be waiting Okay, what I was saying with Canva that using Canva, you can do a lot of things. And uh, if I show you how I extensively use Canva with a pro version. So I have, uh, see where I have a lot of things I've created using Canva. I don't know Photoshop. I don't know anything photo editing or these kind of things, but using Canva with their existing images, you can create a lot of things. So for example, if you create a design, create a custom design, and then uh, you can use existing pictures as well. Click photos and search for like dog carrier. Dog carrier bike. Actually, I need to create a photo for this. You will see all these pro versions which is available in the canva pro you, you don't get that in canva free so um, bike okay, okay. bike dog dog carrier i was looking for and i think i will use something like this probably yeah that's a nice picture but is it free no i don't know it's free i have camera pro bike and dog so uh you see you, you get a very nice picture and it's a royalty free picture and you can use it in your blog, your social media, or anywhere. A very nice picture with high quality resolutions, and it's it's only available in Pro, not free. So, if you are interested creating your exciting social media, creating YouTube thumbnails, anything, everything is possible with Canva. Okay, let's come back to our friend, and he has finished it. Great. So, let's clear the screen, get back to our job which is creating awesome things. Then we are going to uh, run this. So do we install Snapd? So, our in Snapd installation process is going fine. I think most of things has been installed. Just a moment. Clear my screen. Then I come back and 
need to run this as well. You need to enable SnapD and you need to start SnapD. So that's one, and then you need to create a symbolic link. So our SnapD installation went fine. We come back to Certbot and then we need to install core and refresh the core. And okay, so let's just wait one more time because there is something is running in the background and which is saying that too early for operations, device is not ready for seeded or device model. So now our system is ready and it is now downloading the core and refreshing the core. So this is uh, installed. Let's come back here and install Snap Classic. Using Snap, I'm going to install Startbot using the classic mode. This also takes some time because it is downloading the Snap, download the Startbot and installing it. Oh, it's done. It was quick. That was really quick. Then we need to create a symbolic link. That's the purpose of oh, sudo. That's done. Okay, all the hard work has been done. Now we can issue the SSL certificate. This is the final command we should be using. Oh, one more time, sorry. I need to um, install the mod SSL for the Apache. Otherwise this will not work. sudo yum install mod SSL. I should have done this along with the HTTPD, but I missed out. Don't worry, you can install it anytime. Clear the screen and restart the Apache server. sudo system ctl restart restart HTTPD. That's it. Now we can run the Sartport Apache. I need to give the email address, which is uh, info at backpackadvisor.com. Yes, yes, one and two. So they are asking me for which of the subdomain or domain you want to set up HTTPS. I want to for both one and two. So I type one comma two. Awesome. So the certificate issued successfully. And if I refresh this page with smtechpd.com, it should show the red hat page and with the certificate that is issued on today. One more thing, let's create a PHP info file. CD for top, 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 AWS sudo vi index.php and i'm going to create a php info file php info refresh the page it should show php version 7.2 and all those things are given here so it looks easy for me uh if you are using red hat it's it has a great advantage thank you for watching my video that that's it for today i think this was a, a quick video for setting up ssl on red hat 8 if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends thank you have a nice day